Good morning everyone and a warm welcome to our church families of the McGull and Melling Team Churches, St Andrew, St James, St Peter and St Thomas. My name is Pat Dunbar and I'm one of the readers in the four churches. We welcome anybody who we don't know and we also welcome anybody who may be joining us for the first time. And as we begin our worship, we give thanks to God for everything that he has given us and for blessing us in all our situations in the past week. And though we are gathered in a different way, we are reminded that we are here to listen and hear the word of God as he speaks to us today and to pray and worship him and know that he loves each and every one of us. And so in preparation for our worship, we'll have a moment's quiet to bring before God our Father all that we may have said and done that has not shown his love to the world. Having given all this to you, our loving Father, knowing that you love us and we are forgiven, may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect prayer for today. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the light and life of your church, Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is taken from Romans 10. Verses 5 to 15. Salvation is for all. Moses wrote about this being put right with God by obeying the law. Whoever obeys the commands of the law will live. But what the scripture says about being put right with God through faith is this. We are not to ask yourselves who will go up into heaven. That is to bring Christ down. Nor are you to ask who will go down into the world below? That is to bring Christ from death. What it says is this. God's message is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the message of faith that we preach. If you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from death, you will be saved. For it is by our faith that we are put right with God. It is by our confessions that we are saved. The scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. This includes everyone because there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles. God is the same Lord of all and richly blesses all who call to him. As the scripture says, Everyone who calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. But how can they call to him for help if they do not believe? And how can they believe if they have not heard the message? And how can they hear the message if it is not proclaimed? And how can the message be proclaimed if the messages, messengers are not sent out? As the scripture says, how wonderful is the coming of messengers who bring good news. That is the word of the Lord. Praise to God. The Spirit lives to set us free. us all in unity. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in 
the light of the Lord. Jesus promised life to all. Walk, walk in the light. The dead were wakened by his call. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. By Jesus' love our wounds are healed. Walk, walk in the light. The Father's kindness is revealed. Walk, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. The Spirit lives in you and me, walk, walk in the light, His light will shine for all to see. Walk in the light of the Lord. This reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, and reading verses 22 to 33. Jesus calms the storm. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified saying, it's a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's Gospel, first Jesus walks on water, then Peter walks on water, then Peter sinks into the water, and then Jesus saves him. And in all this, the grace of Christ and the right response of his faithful are shown. Jesus walks on water for a reason. He wants to come and be with his disciples. He is on the land, they in the boat. Something has gone wrong with their plans. The wind was against them. They are supposed to have joined the Lord on the other side of the lake. Instead, they are cut off from him. But by his own power, he is going to cross that barrier to come and join them. When we were cut off from God, he came to join us. We were as far from him as heaven is from earth, as far as what is eternal is from what is temporal, as far as holiness is from sinners. But God in Christ crosses those barriers to be God with us, on this earth, in this age, in our human nature. And as he wants to draw near to us, so he wants us to draw near to him, to recognise him when he comes, 
take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And as Peter recognises him in the flesh, though seeming like a spirit, he wants us to recognise his word in the scripture, his sacrifice in the blessed sacrament, his face in the faces of the baptised and in the faces of the poor. And he wants us not only to draw near to him, but to ask for this blessing, to say with Peter, if it is you, Lord, command me to come to you. Jesus walks on water to come and be with Peter, and to come and be with Jesus, Peter walks on water as if it were solid ground. The disciple does what he sees the master doing, because he wants what the master wants, and he is given the power to do it because he trusts in Christ. And if you and I want what Jesus wants, and if we trust in him, we too will walk the walk that he walks. Peter walks, not only in his own power, but in the power that Christ shares with him. This is how grace is at work, not as superpower, but as the life of God shared with us in all its fullness. Master and disciple draw close together. In the end, they are even hand in hand, and everything that the Lord has, he is ready to share with Peter, even as far as calling Peter and you and I, children of God, like him. Now, Peter is still weak like us and afraid, and his fear sometimes outweighs his trust and his desire, and he begins to sink, and he cries, Lord, save me. And Jesus reaches out and holds him tight. Peter is saved, not only from the water, but also from the temptation to think that he can stand in his own strength. And his cry is a cry of faith in the one who has the power. Peter is weak, like us. But his weakness is not a failure. It is another opportunity to put his trust in Jesus. Another chance to call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. And our God, who in Christ has come close to Peter, and to us, is only the more willing to hold him as tight as he needs. With the disciples then, let us always fall down to worship the God who chooses to draw near to us whatever the barriers between. With Peter, let us draw near to God with faith and ask confidently, for the gifts that will make us able to grow in likeness to Christ. As beginners in Christ, let us continually cry with him, Lord, save us, for we know both our need and the power of God. And here is solid ground indeed to walk upon, and there is no other. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our prayers this morning, I will allow space for you to add your own prayers. Prayers for people you know, pray for situations you know. Don't be afraid to press the pause button to give yourself more time. Let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Today we pray for your church. We pray for your church here in Magol and Melling, your church in this country and your church across the world. We pray that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And today, Lord, we pray that you will bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, that you will give wisdom to all in authority, and that you will direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray today that you will give grace to us, to our families and friends and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today that you will comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. So now we bring before God those who are known to us, who are in need of prayer this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have lost a loved one those who are mourning the anniversary of the passing of their loved one. So we pray for them now, naming in our hearts those who are known to us who are in need of prayer this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So now we gather all of our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, as we say together the Lord's Prayer in its traditional form. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
We hope you've enjoyed our morning worship from the McGull and Melling team on Church to You this morning. And now we close with our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we finish with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.